this video will be the first of a series of setup tutorials on the Qi Yun Weibo S. And today we are going to be starting off with the Panasonic G9. And if you are a Panasonic G9 user, you will be extremely happy to know that although the Panasonic G9 is not on the Qi Yun Weibo S's camera compatibility list, as I suspected, as this G9 is so similar to the GH5 and the GH5S, I tested it out and I managed to get the Panasonic G9 working and connected with all functionality on the Qi Yun Weibo S. So pretty exciting. It's not on the camera compatibility list, but it still works. Always good to find out things like this. So as mentioned, this will be a series of setup tutorials. Just in case you are wondering what setups I will be doing. First of all, after this Panasonic G9, I will be doing the Canon EOS RP, the Sony A6500, the Canon 200D, the Nikon Z6, the Sony A7 III, the EM1 4K mirrorless camera, and the Canon 80D. So if you are interested in any of these setups, be sure to subscribe and hit that notifications button. So right now, let's check out what are the stuff required to mount your Panasonic G9 or any camera on your Qi Yun Weibo S. So these are the stuff required for setting up your Panasonic G9 on the Qi Yun Weibo S. So first of all, you have your battery pack. I hope you've already charged your batteries for at least two and a half hours at least for the first charge you need to install the batteries into the Weeble S so you can see at the bottom here there are some threads the threads over here so all you gotta do is push it up and it will open it up and install your batteries so plus is both sides on top on the right hand side over here so we're gonna install the batteries give the plus on top put the batteries in and then close like that so that's all for the batteries so next up we have the tripod this tripod it comes with a lock if you are placing this tripod at the bottom of your gimbal you don't need to lock it you only need to use this lock if you are placing your tripod on the top of your gimbal you can see the small holes around it when you actually screw this in and lock it it will actually lock in the hole but if you're screwing it at the bottom, you don't need to lock it. Just screw it in as per normal, like that. Make sure that it's tight. Open up the legs and set it aside. Next up, you have your camera riser. I am using a Sigma 16mm f1.4 lens on my Panasonic G9. Even with the lens hood uh, for this setup, you can see from the side view, even for this long lens with the lens hood you don't require the camera riser unless you're using a much bigger lens than mine you will need the camera riser but for my case i'm not going to use the camera riser so i'm just going to set it aside so that is actually optional then you have the quick release plate so once you take it out of the box like this what you can do is to separate it firstly remove the lens support screw so remove the lens support screw and the lens support, put it aside. And then for this dual special piece of quick adjustment plate, we also need to separate it. So what you got to do this, we got to loosen that. You can see that it's loose right now. Press this on the side. Once that's loose, once you press it there, you can actually remove the top and split it into two. Then next up, since I'm not using the camera riser on this plastic bag, all you need is one screw. You are using the camera riser, then you will require all three screws because the camera riser uses one screw and your quick adjustment plate uses two screws. But if you're not using the camera riser, all you got to do is get out one screw. Then you also need a coin because we need to screw these screws. We can actually use a screwdriver or a coin to tighten the screws. And last of all, you need a cable for connecting. So the Panasonic G9 is not on the compatibility list, but I managed to get it to work on the Digi and Weebill S. So that's really good news. The G9 is actually really, really similar to the GH5 and the GH5S, which are on the camera compatibility list. The only difference is that if you are using the Panasonic G9, you need to get out this wire, which is the micro USB to micro USB cable. 
so both sides are actually micro USB again this side the angle side goes into the Weeble S you can see on the Weeble S there is a micro USB port the angle head will go into this part on the Weeble S and the straight side this one goes into your Panasonic G9 if you are using the Panasonic G9 get this cable if you are a GH5 or GH5S user get the USB type C to the micro USB the micro USB is the standard head on the Weeble S but the GH5 GH5S is using the USB type C so if you are using that camera get this cable instead for the Panasonic G9 I might as well show, show it right now if you open it up on the left you'll see this giant port so this is how you plug it in is uh, you can see there's two parts get the cable in the right direction and just put it into the bigger port like that yep so the straight end goes into the G9's port so yeah basically that's about it so let's get straight to the setup so after separating the quick adjustment plate take the top layer of the quick adjustment plate get that one metal screw this screw over here and then you will see if you turn it upside down you can see that the hole at the top here where the zero is is slightly bigger so you just need to screw the screw in this direction so that the screw pops out on top so just take that screw and screw it in and then just let it slide down just like that and then next we're gonna attach this to your Panasonic G9 so get your Panasonic G9 ready remove the lens cap and if you want to remove the lens hood you can as well to try to make it as easy to balance as possible we try to make the camera as bare as possible but if you do require the lens hood chin will s can take the weight of the g9 with the 16 millimeters f 1.4 with the lens hood so that would be no issue so just turn the g9 to the bottom at the top here you can see the screw so the screw is for the lens support so make sure the hole and screw it into the bottom so just use your finger and screw it into the bottom of your g9 or a gh5 or a gh5s this will work this is the same method for any camera basically and then what you got to do is try to get your base flushed and in line with the back of the cameras to get the quick adjustment plate giving it the support it needs for the back of the camera so just get it in line you can if you want you can maybe stick it out like that doesn't matter but as long as you try to give you get it I like to get it flush like that and then all you got to do is use your screwdriver or your coin and tighten it make sure that it's flush before you tighten it just tighten it give it a good tighten as much as possible make sure that it's flush and use the lens support so just put the lens support underneath the lens like that with the screw put the lens support underneath take the lens support screw just screw it in one way to get it flushed is if you hold it from the top your left hand on top use your thumb and your middle finger if you can reach and hold it down like that hold it down like that and just screw it in so that would ensure that the lens support is flushed and there you have it so after doing this and you can now have the separate piece all you gotta do is take the bottom piece press on that and attach it to combine the two pieces together and once it's tight push in the screw over here and then tighten it as much as possible and then we're done so basically that's about it
So the only thing that we have left, which we will be attaching last of all, is the connection cable, the micro USB to micro USB cable. If you are using the GH5, then like I said, you get the micro USB to the USB type C cable. So next step is to actually open up your Chiin Weevil S. So you do have the three axis, one axis over here. So just push it to the left and it would unlock. And at the top here as well, push it to the left. Sometimes it's a little bit hard. Okay, just open it up. And if you turn your gimbal to the side on the left hand side, you will see one more at the top here. So just push it down and you will get it all unlocked so now we can get it into position so your tilt axis on the right you got your roll axis and your pan axis at the bottom here so once you open it up you can actually lock it again just lock all three axes so i got it all locked again in this position so with the joystick, basically for this part, for the tripod facing yourself, this should be how to open up and lock your gimbal in this manner. So once it's open up, okay, so on this part over here, before we actually mount your G9 or the GH5 on to the gimbal, you need to loosen this first. This one goes to the right and this one comes down. So it will loosen both these screws and you can easily slide your camera on and then you need to press this over here to let it slide all the way in so it will balance because all the axes are locked at the moment okay so once we've slid the g9 on you can see this switch, this switch at the bottom here, you can actually loosen that so that we can do the balancing front and back. And I can see that it's back heavy. So we push it to the front and make sure once, once it can stand alone without you touching it, it can balance. You can see it's slightly front heavy. Now you can actually flip that switch back to lock it in place. So this switch over here. And so now we got the tilt settled we can now do the left to right so the left to right and right now it's locked so i can't move it as you can see over here so you just flip that switch to the left and you will be able to move it left or right so now i'm going to unlock this axis over here and now you can see that it's too much heavy to the left so you just need to push the camera to the right now it's too much to the right try to get it balanced without you touching it then you know that it's good and balanced like something like this so once it can stand on its own without you balancing it should be fine we need to do minor adjustments later on anyway so you don't have to make it really that accurate for the moment so we got the tilt and now we're going to do this direction oh okay so that already stands uh, faces upwards on its own. You can see that it, when I flip it upwards, it's already more or less balanced. But if yours doesn't balance, the switch is over here at the top. You can see where my finger is. Loosen that, put it in this position. Then you can actually move it back and forth until you can see now it's front heavy. So push it backwards until it can stand on its own something like this once it faces upwards without you touching it you can tighten the knob at the top here this knob over here tighten it if it manages to stand on its own so right now we got right now we got the front balance and the left to right is also balanced on the tilt and if you flip it up that's also balanced so right now we're going to come to the last axis and then we should be done so pretty actually pretty pretty easy to do the setup on this wheel as it is very very nice and simple like i said this g9 actually weighs in at 1.1 kg 
So I think it's a good median setup that I'm doing a, a good median in weight among all the different camera setups available in the market. Umba 1kg should be a really nice weighted camera setup to show you a tutorial on before I shift to the lighter or the heavier camera setups. Right now, this screw over here, you can loosen that. So you need to unlock access as well. So the access lock is on the other side. So flip it to the left. Okay. You have to make sure everything is tight because it does tend to slide a lot if it's not tight enough. So every once in a while you need to check if anything has slid off balance. So far so good. Uh, for the last pan axis, all you gotta do is flip it upwards like this and then flip it 45 degrees like this and if it stays, you're all good to go. If it doesn't, if it rolls back, I'm gonna change the marking. 45 degrees the weight is quite light so most of the markings are able to take the weight of this G9 and moves and then just make the adjustment again like that something like that it doesn't move so we can actually tighten it testing it out again make sure everything is balanced you will have to make minor adjustments here and there like you can see right now it's slightly tilting to the left but we will use the auto tune button on the G9 we will ask to actually strengthen the motors accordingly uh, but you just need a rough rough balancing like this is it slightly to the left it doesn't really matter as long as it doesn't flip too much so basically that's it that's how you set up like i said it will be slightly off sometimes but it doesn't really matter so yep so that's how you balance your panasonic g9 or your gh5 or your gh5s and then last of all we need to plug in the cable over here so here's the port just take that U micro USB. Like I said, if you are using the you're using the GH5, GH5S, this should be the USB Type C instead. So just plug it in here, and the other angle side, this angle side must be going to the gimbal. If you put it the other way around, connection will not work. And there you have it. So right now we're gonna sh I'm gonna show you how to do the settings on your G9 and as well as explore how to do the auto tuning and, and all the different uh, features available directly on the gimbal itself without having to touch the ZY app. Everything can be done on this gimbal itself. So that's pretty awesome. You don't need the ZY app. So let's get to it. So here's what you gotta do to get your Panasonic G9 working on your Qi Yin Weevil S. So I'm just turn on the camera itself so the settings we need to get right before we turn on the gimbal go into your menu and then you go under spanner over here and under the spanner you will see usb mode so you need to be in pc tether mode and your usb power supply must be on if it is off connection will not work so you need to turn it on and that's about it so once you got the cables connected and you got the settings done, we can now power on your Qi Yin Weevil S. So I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so the camera is still on. Now I'm going to power on on the left hand side of the Weevil S. The power button is at the bottom here. So just press and hold that. On the screen, you will see USB power supply, blah, blah, blah. Just leave it. It will automatically disappear so one thing to take note if your camera is successfully connected to the Qi in Weeble S is that at the bottom you should see the aperture f1.4 or whatever aperture that you are at on your uh, lens there's an a there and a tick and you see f1.4 so pretty cool thing is that you can actually control your f-stop on the gimbal itself and also the shutter speed so currently all you can see on the screen I'm at 50 you can actually, you can see I'm at f1.4 if I turn the wheel over here, turning, turning it to the left, you will actually, you can actually see the f stop moving. So I'm going to bring it down all the way to f1.4 again. And if you press the right button, you can see that I have shutter speed indicated over here as well. So that's pretty cool. And again, if you want to change the shutter speed, you can just turn the wheel to whatever shutter speed you want. I'm going to leave it at 50 and auto ISO. You can also change your ISO by turning the wheel. 
and your exposure. If you don't see this menu the moment you turn on your Chain Ripple S and your Panasonic G9, you need to actually go into the menu settings of the Chain Ripple S. Okay, so in order to get into the menu, if you don't see these things over here, if you see just a big words PF, means that your camera isn't connected to the Chain Ripple S. So in order to fix that, you need to go into your menu. How do you go into the menu? As you can see this dial over here, press the down button and you will come to your menu. So in order to select the option that you want, you just press right. And if you want to go back, you press left. And if you want to scroll down to the second option, rotate the wheel. So if you rotate it right, you'll go down and if you rotate it left, you will go up. So normally when I set up new cameras, I will normally hit the auto tune button. So we go to motor, press the right button, go to auto, press the right button again, you, you will see it auto tuning. So when you auto tune, you will see the camera vibrating. And then once it's done, you will see check OK. And if you want to go to the next option, scroll the wheel to camera. This is the option, press the right button you actually need to select what camera you're using. So if you're using a Canon or a Nikon or a Sony, I'm using a Panasonic, so I'll just hit the press the pen, uh, press right to select the Panasonic camera and it should connect. After selecting this option, if it still doesn't work, you just power off both devices and then power it back on and that should work. So we can go into advanced, press the right button again to select speed, smoothness and dead band. You can go back to default options, then you can select the wheel joystick you can actually set the joystick reverse calibrate let's see what calibrate does i haven't really seen this before it doesn't seem to be doing anything actually okay so that doesn't work at the moment and then you have the angle option pitch and roll You can actually set the pitch and roll if your axes are actually not working correctly. And then you got key, the trigger button, hold or click, function, hold or click as well. And the last option is they will show you your version, version 1.89, which is the latest version of this firmware for the chain we will S. So basically that's about it for the menu. And also if you hit the POV button three times, you will go into this button over here, the POV button. If you hit that three times, you will go into selfie mode. So I'm going to hold up the camera now just to let you see going into selfie mode. So I've hit the POV button three times, two, three. It goes to selfie mode and if you wanted to go back just hit it three times again yep and basically that's it okay so we're downstairs right now and we're shooting at 4K 24 frames per second and seeing like D in PF mode on the Sheen Webill S and I got the tripod on top for testing out the low lying shots so we're shooting at waist level right now Just testing out the stabilization. I'm gonna do a low shot right now by my knee. I'm gonna bring it down all the way to my knee for low shots. How's the stabilization? You're not so sure how that looked. Uh, we're gonna go into a different mode right now. 
So in order to lock the keys in case you accidentally press one of them, all you gotta do is double tap the up button that would unlock the buttons on the chain wiggle S and now we're in L mode so L mode actually locks into a position so even if you pan it will stay in the same direction like that you can see my body going back to PF mode right now I'm going to try POV mode, point of view, supposed to have the, the recenter, supposed to be able to react the fastest in POV mode, something like DJI Sport mode. So do a quick pan. Pan again. So again, POV mode. 4K 24 frames per second. Then we're gonna try the vortex mode right now again. Just pretty interested to know how the stabilization is. I got it auto tuned. I've got it balanced properly. So we're going vertigo by double tapping the POV button twice. Motor seems to be holding up. Yep, so pretty nice. Bring it back to recenter, and right now shooting at chest level with the joystick still on top. So we are in go mode right now. Go mode actually locks the axis. Even reacts faster than the... POV mode. It's actually more stiff. It stiffens. You can see I'm moving and it's reacting really really fast. This would definitely be for more like a sports mode rather than the POV mode. Let's see, I'm deliberately moving it like that just to test out the quickness. How does it go when you're doing some running? I think it should be really jittery. It's actually gone upwards. I'm gonna go PF mode. So hitting the POV button three times actually brings you into selfie mode and holding the trigger button goes, goes into F mode so you need to press and hold the F mode so many different kinds of modes yep so basically that was the test so thanks guys for watching hope you enjoyed this video on the Panasonic G9 setup on the chain we will ask in the next upcoming video i will be doing the canon eos rp step-by-step -step tutorial so stay tuned for that so thanks guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace